What's up y'all, I'm back out here at the range on a cloudy morning. Temperature is supposed to be pretty nice today, right in the low 70s. It wasn't supposed to be quite as cloudy, but as you can see, I mean, it's completely cloudy out here. Although that is keeping it nice and cool because it's keeping the sun covered up. So I ain't gonna complain if it stays this way the rest of the day. But either way, I've got a few really interesting tests planned for today. And this first one's gonna be some more fancy fluted nine mil. So I've got the jelly contraption ready to roll with a couple of chronos and two fresh blocks of gel first test of the day y'all know the deal there you get a really nice clear picture of what goes on got my heavy clothing barrier as always with a layer of denim fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt and what we got for this one is a round that's been requested many times down in the comments by a certain someone we've got the black hills honey badger nine mil this is their 100 grain plus p round now y'all know i've tested quite a few of these solid copper fluted type rounds in the past uh, from the lehigh offerings uh the ARX type stuff that's not actually copper, but it's a fluted style round. And I believe a couple of others I can't think of right off the top of my head. There's absolutely no denying that they do what they're supposed to do. They usually give you some nice penetration in the gel, really nice control penetration. Uh, as far as the disruption, it's right on par with pretty much any of the hollow points out there. So I'm expecting some pretty good performance from these here. Now, the one issue I already have before I even send the first round is the velocity on these. They're claiming 1250 from a four inch barrel that gives you somewhere around 340 something as far as foot pounds of energy i mean a lot of people again are going to argue that it really doesn't matter when you're talking about handgun but i personally y'all know me i've got kind of a personal mark i like to see on nine mil of right around 400 foot pounds so again already out of the box these are a little bit weaker than i'm personally looking for but i do think my preference aside they're going to do a nice job here's your cartridge here very cool looking projectile actually you see you got a brass case but check out that projectile it's not just the flutes all the way around they've actually got notches halfway up the spine of those flutes so it should be really interesting to see if there's a difference in what we can see in the disruption as far as the gel goes and then as far as what i'm running them out of out here we've got the usual nine mil test tools for the short barrel i've got my canic mede mc9 with the 3.1 inch barrel and then for the full size i've got the g17 with the four and a half inch barrel so this ought to be a good one again i'm expecting some good performance i'm just curious to see if i can tell a difference between these and maybe some of the other fluted stuff so let's get it all set up and find out all right y'all let's see how feisty these little badgers are i'm gonna do a five round average from each barrel length starting with this med amc9 first now if y'all aren't familiar with this lab radar like i always mention you're gonna get multiple velocity readings the large number is right here at the muzzle and then you've got five across the bottom the first one there i've got set for three yards which is roughly where the gel is here at 10 feet and then i've got the other set for 10 15 25 and 50 yards now remember they're saying 1250 on this from a four inch barrel this is 3.1 so we most likely won't see that i'd personally like to see this stuff 100 fps faster across the board i mean that's where it needs to be to be around 400 foot pounds for me let's see what it gives us here 12 17 12 23 12 31 12 04 and 1212 so definitely not the 1250 we didn't expect it it got close to that 1250 so they're probably being honest out of a four inch barrel let's check out the average all right so we had a five round average of 1217 feet per second extreme spread was 29 with a 10.1 standard deviation so pretty good consistency on it 1217 again i'm sure that's going to do a fine job in the gel it's just a little weak for my preference but let's get it reset and see what that g17 does all right let's see what this four and a half inch does i absolutely expect to see the 1250 and then some from this because they're claiming that 1250 from a four inch barrel we've got four and a half right here let's see what we actually get 1327 1304 1304 again 1279 
and 1280 so we did exceed that 1250 probably right about where we should expect to see let's check out this average all right we're starting to get a little closer to what i'm looking for with this right here out of the longer barrel so our average that time was 1299 feet per second we did have one up to 1327 extreme spread of 47 with a 19.8 standard deviation so 1299 obviously exceeded the 1250 it's still going to put us below the 400 not a whole lot and again that's just an arbitrary number that i look for so take that for what it's worth so 12.99 here and if you remember out that mc9 it was 12.17 so you're talking about uh 82 feet per second difference between them so not a whole lot of difference there as far as performance in the gel i don't think that's gonna make much difference at all maybe a little bit on the penetration so again i don't have any doubt we're gonna see some good performance but a little bit more spice would really make these things nice but that's enough talking about it let me get everything reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's is this honey worth the money jelly time i'm gonna put one from each barrel length into the gel starting with this 3.1 inch first again i'm pretty sure these are gonna give us some nice performance i'm really curious of the penetration mainly all right that looks really nice down there let's go check it out All right, that's looking really nice down there, y'all. Very, very nice looking performance. Let's see what this G17 does. Ooh, I went really close to that other one. It's definitely separated though. Let's check it out. All right, let's check this stuff out down here, y'all. Long story short is these things did exactly what they claimed to do, and they did a really nice job of it. Up here on the top now, they did kind of run together. They didn't really run together, but you know what I mean. This expansion kind of did because all of this is tumbling. I'll show you up close here again. Both of these tumbled. There's absolutely no doubt about it. The one here on the top, that was obviously the first one from the MC9, comes in here, massive area of disruption right here. Now, once I bring you in closer, you're going to see kind of really what I mostly pay attention to. You know, I've talked about this disruption in the gel, and I don't want to get sidetracked again, but you have to really take these pretty pictures with a grain of salt because that's not really real world. You're not going to see that big pretty picture, especially from that tumbling in a handgun anyway. So anyway, definitely tumbling right here. You've seen it grow from the start till now. Huge area of disruption, even without that tumbling, really, really nice area area of disruption so very nice energy transfer all the way through this block you've got some really nice disruption and the projectile is sitting here backwards probably about a half of an inch into this second block they are both exactly the same too which is one really good thing i have to give credit to uh, when it comes to these fluted rounds they pretty much always have the same penetration no matter what barrel length so then coming back and looking down here on the bottom that was from the g17 obviously basically the same story here comes in here very very nice energy transfer this one also tumbled the gel just didn't happen to stretch as much but same kind of tumbling as far as the other disruption i'm looking at other than the tumbling pretty much the same it comes in here again all the way through this first block you got some really nice disruption and once again it's turned around backwards and exactly the same as far as penetration and speaking of the penetration on both of these it's exactly 16 and a half inches i mean exactly the same so absolutely fantastic penetration from both and then here we are up close i'll give you a really close hopefully you can see what i'm kind of trying to talk about there as far as you can tell the difference where that kind of the energy itself basically made the disruption and then the extra tumbling made the extra around it same goes for both of them you can see there if we pull out there very very nice though i mean all the way through this block it's dumping a lot of nice energy and then pokes into that second block very very nice that they have the same penetration and then your overhead look here even more exaggerated because you've got a really wide flat surface there so no doubt these things cause some nice disruption and they definitely did everything that they claim to do 
All right, let's take a look at these projectiles right quick. Normally, I would say from a non-expander, even a fluted copper round, that really nothing exciting to look at here. But honestly, the, just the design of this is kind of cool to look at on its own, how they've got it notched like that. So I don't know, you know, I'd really have to put this side by side with something like a, a XD to see if that made any difference as far as looks in the gel. But I don't want to go putting, you know, I don't want to do what I'm saying not to do and put too much weight in what this looks like in the gel because again, in in my opinion, you know, a fluted round is a fluted round. The disruption is really pretty to look at and kind of speculate on, but I think at the end of the day, they're basically all doing about the same thing. But nonetheless, these are very cool to look at. Even on the bottom, I've noticed they've got a hole there, so I'm sure that's the, something to do with, you know, the size and weight of copper having to get it uh, light enough with the amount of powder they can get in the case because of the size of this stuff. I'm not now and never have claimed to be a low development expert, but I'm pretty sure that's the purpose of you seeing a lot of hollowed out bases just to get these things light enough that's why you don't really see the really heavy 147s and stuff like that when it comes to solid copper because it would be so big you wouldn't be able to get enough powder in the case to do anything but let's get us a couple of quick little measurements on them they both started at 100 obviously there should be no loss that one's at 99.6 so nothing lost there this one is at 99.4, so absolutely nothing lost, just plain old manufacturing tolerances. And then as far as the sizes, I'll just do a diameter and length. You got 354 with a length of 650, and 354 again with a length of 647. And there you go, y'all, the Black Hills Honey Badger 9 mil, 100 grain plus P, solid copper fluted rounds. Really cool looking rounds here for sure, no doubt about it. They've got a very cool appearance and had really nice performance again they did exactly what they claimed to do and did it very very nicely now all of that being said i'm still wanting a little bit more i just want a little bit more energy from a nine mil you know the little bit more may not make that much difference but i just want to know i'm getting at least a certain mark and that's just something i hold pretty much all nine mil to and that's just the way i'm always going to be but my personal preference aside if you are a fan of these solid copper fluted rounds i think this is another absolutely fantastic choice all right y'all i'm gonna call it right there for a pretty good nine mil test to start the day again i think long story short here is these things did exactly what they claimed and they did it well very nice penetration out of both barrels which is something i absolutely love to see i really like knowing what kind of performance i'm going to get no matter what barrel length i'm using so very very nice as far as that goes again i'd personally like to see it a little bit spicier but if you are in the market for some solid fluted copper rounds like this I think these right here are another very good choice. But let me know down in the comments what y'all think about it. Do any of y'all out there run these Honey Badger 100 grain plus peas in 9 mil? Do you run another type of solid fluted copper round? Let me know down in the comments what you do run and what your thoughts are. If you did enjoy the video, take a second and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you've got those notifications turned on so you get notified when I upload stuff. Holidays are coming up fast, so I know there's going to be some shopping going on. Take a second if y'all would and check out those affiliate affiliate links I've got in the video description. Anything you get after hitting those links up, I get a kickback from them towards the channel, so I really do appreciate that. Big thanks as always to my range gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel. I've got a couple more really interesting things planned for out here today, so stay on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see y'all soon.